Hey everyone, Kelvin here. So I saw some koi fish the other day and it really inspired me to kind of figure out a simple way to paint them. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. This is a great project for anyone of any skill level because you'll be able to create a finished little scene in that wabi-sabi kind of zen style in just a few minutes. So I've already got a watercolor paper texture loaded into Procreate and this time I'm using the LinkedIn paper texture which is one I haven't used in a long time. And for the brushes, I'm just gonna use the regular brushes in the regular watercolor kit. And as usual, I'll put links to everything I use and a little bit more information about it in the description down below. So no sketch is necessary. I'm just gonna start painting on a layer underneath the paper texture, just like you normally do. And for the brush, I'm gonna start with the abstract round brush, which is part of the regular watercolor kit. And since the main color of these koi fish is that kind of medium saturated orange color, I'm gonna start with that first. So I'm gonna use that abstract round at almost the largest size. Maybe I'll go all the way. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I always start with the head first. So I'll start by making a kind of a ball shape like that. I'm pressing pretty hard. I'll circle around and then taper it off. And it's okay if it gets a little bit screwed up. It's normal, it's just part of uh, the Apple Pencil and how Procreate works. So I'm gonna go in there again with the eraser brush. And I've already set that to the fine liner pen, which is also part of the regular watercolor kit. And I'm gonna fix my strokes here, mostly around the head. I want it to be uh, very angular, I guess almost like a snake head. So I'll flatten the sides, I'll flatten the nose, and then I'll just kind of taper the sides to uh, meet the uh, flat nose. So uh, with anything in this kind of Zen style, it's important not to get carried away with making it perfect. It really adds to the uh, look of this when you leave couple of mistakes here and there, so don't get carried away with the eraser tool. Now for the tail, I do wanna fix the taper. For some reason, it always tapers off uh, a little bit too slowly. So I'm just gonna kind of shave away at that and make it a little bit skinnier at the tail. There we go, that looks much better. Next, I'm gonna move on and do the fins. So I'm gonna grab the same abstract round I did the body with, and I'm gonna do the tail sort of floating so that means I'm not gonna connect it. It's gonna be out here like this. And one of the things I like to do is I'll curve the tail in the opposite way as the body of the fish. So the fish is curving this way. So I'm gonna make it a point to make the tail kind of curving out the other way. There we go, that's it for the tail. The fins in the back, kind of a similar thing. I'll do them floating. And also I'll often kind of stagger them a little bit so they're not perfectly lined up. I just think that looks uh, pretty nice in this style. Now for the fins up here, basically I'm gonna imagine the head, right? This, is, this would be about where the eye is. So I'll put the fins back here. But again, with fish, the proportions aren't really critical. And even if you get it way wrong, it'll look fine. Next, I'm gonna add some details to the fish and I'm gonna do it on the same layer. I'm just gonna change the brush to the fine liner pen and I'm gonna change the color to a slightly redder version of that same color. I don't need to darken it at all because the fine liner pen just by itself, uh, it's always gonna show up a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the fine liner pen, maybe around 20%, and I'm just gonna add a bunch of lines kind of on the fins like this. And I'm also gonna add a pretty bold line along the back here. And I'm sort of pulsing the pressure so it doesn't end up being too smooth. And then I'm gonna go in there just along the edge and in a couple of areas, I'm gonna add a very light line. And sometimes I like to add a kind of a mouth on the fish. So it's really easy. I'm just gonna make this kind of, I guess it's like a C shape like this. And then sometimes I'll add a little bit of whiskers like this. And I think while I'm on the head, I'll add the eyes real quick. So I'll select pretty much pure black. And I'm just gonna do some kind of narrow discs on the side like this. And you don't have to do scales, uh, but I think it does add a nice kind of pattern. So for the scales, I recommend doing it on a different layer so we can lower the opacity later on. And for the color, pretty much any version uh, similar to the color we used previously. And I'll use the fine liner pen brush. And the scales are really easy. I'm just gonna do a bunch of these little C shapes like this. Now, it's important to not get too carried away. You don't have to make them really close together. Uh, it's just a suggestion of detail, so I'll do them with a lot of space in between. And 
and maybe I'll lighten the color a little bit and then add a, a few more kind of lighter scales. Now the strength of those scales or the contrast there is a little bit too strong. So that's why we did them on this separate layer. So I'm gonna set the transparency mode to multiply. I'll lower it to zero and then slowly raise it back up just until they're barely there. Uh, but I don't want them to be like the focal point or anything. And now that the body of the fish is done and all the details here are finished, I'm just gonna merge those two layers together and I can focus on the shading and color now. So usually I recommend kind of darkening around the edge of the head. So I'm gonna do that with the selection tool set to freehand. And I'll just select along here like this, reconnect it. I'll feather this one out quite a bit. Hue saturation and brightness for the layer. And I'll darken it, saturate it, and then maybe shift the color a little bit towards red just to add a kind of color variation in there to make it more interesting. And if you want to, you can do a similar thing on other portions of the body. I think it does look good if it has a shadow kind of on the inside of the curve. So selection tool, set to freehand, just like that, reconnect it, feather it out quite a bit, hue saturation and brightness, and then I'll do the same thing as before. Now the next part is optional, but a lot of these fish have two or three different colors. So I like to drop those in using the selection tool, kind of like how I did the shadows. So I wanna add in a bunch of kind of white spots on this fish. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool again, still set to freehand, and I'll just randomly select a couple of areas like this. And all those selections are still active, so I can feather them out at the same time. And I'll feather them out a lot, maybe around 10 or 12%. Then I'll go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness again. I'll raise the brightness a little bit. I'll lower the saturation, uh, not necessarily to zero, but pretty low. And then I'll just kind of go back and forth, kind of raising the brightness, messing with the saturation until I find a nice kind of balance there. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. So this koi fish is all done, and by itself, uh, it's really cool, but there's an easy way to add a kind of a next level to the scene here. So if I open up the layers panel, this koi fish is just on one layer. So I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna grab the arrow tool and kind of zoom out here. I'll just rotate it and try to imagine a kind of a circle. There we go. And these fish are exactly the same, uh, but there's an easy way to turn this one into a black koi fish. So I'm gonna make sure that second one is selected. I'll go to my adjustments, hue saturation and brightness for the layer. And first I'll desaturate that fish. And then I'll lower the brightness. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. And sometimes, um, in this case, my colors are very transparent. I want this koi fish to be even darker than that, because right now it looks kind of gray. So I'm gonna duplicate it in the layers panel. So now two of them are basically like stacking on top of each other. Uh, that's why it's showing up darker. And I can kind of lower the opacity there and control uh, how dark that second fish is. I think that's pretty good. I'll just merge those together. And I'm left with just these two uh, different koi fish now. And just to make this easier again, I'll merge those together as well. Now right now, both fish are exactly the same. And depending on how you did it, it might not be as circular as you want it to be. So as long as that layer is selected, I can grab the uh, arrow tool here. I'll go to warp and I can actually warp these fish. And this will, um, not only will this make each fish a little bit more unique when compared to the other one, it'll also let us kind of stretch this into a more circular shape. And there we go, this one is all done. And uh, if I zoom in here, you can really see the texture on the LinkedIn watercolor paper texture. I'm thinking more and more this one is really suitable for this style. So I think I might be using this one more uh, in the future videos. And uh, here's what it looks like when I print this one out. So hopefully this uh, tutorial here is pretty easy. I really think keeping it simple is best with this kind of stuff. It's just more satisfying than other styles. I think because I can be kind of a perfectionist, I get lost making some other painting styles just more and more perfect. So if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please leave a comment down below. Uh, not only do I enjoy getting inspired from your ideas, it also lets YouTube know that this video is worth recommending to others. And that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.